Welcome to the Popish Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. It's Easter still. He is risen indeed. He... No, go Alle ahead. Alleluia. Alleluia. And we are here with some stupid questions. <laughs> It's been a while. Which, it's been a while, and we love our stupid questions. Oh. Have you submitted a stupid question to us lately? No, because if you did, we would have been answering. We would have been answering yours and not ours. <laughs> so, is that a stupid question? Yes. Mm. <laughs> Please submit your stupid questions below, or, or email them to us at thepopishplot at gmail .com. But anyways, we've got some stupid questions on relics. Yes. This week, this past weekend, we had the reading from Acts. Where people, invalids and other people who needed healing, were being brought to the side of the road, simply so in the hopes that they would get close enough for St. Peter's shadow to fall upon them. Yes. And we also had, in Catholic news of the internet this week, the fact that it appears that St. Teresa of Avila's reliquary for her hand might be the whole thing that the Infinity Stone Gauntlet was based off of. Also, she appeared to be one stone away from having them all. <laughs> yeah, that it 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 was it was both creepy and how much it looked like it, and, and at the same time a little creepy in the, the fact that it was a hand encased in metal. Imagine how much reform she could have enacted if only she'd wielded that much power. Mm -hmm. just, a <laughs> just a snap of her fingers. Suddenly, all the Carmelites lose their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> their shoes just disappear in, in like ash. <laughs> So anyways... Except, are you really discalced if they take away your shoes? Don't you have to, like, voluntarily renounce your shoes? I, I don't know the rules for the order. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you should ask the Frank Fryer. He'd know. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Anyways. Since we had these readings and, and these things going on, uh, we thought, you know, there's a lot of questions that people have regarding relics. Yes. Well, plus, it does tie into, also to this past weekend's gospel reading, in that the physicality of Jesus is intensely important to the resurrection. Yes. You know, the apostles don't believe when they've heard eyewitness testimony. They only believe when they see him themselves. Yeah. And, you know, poor doubting Thomas, he gets called doubting because he just wants the same treatment. He won't believe testimony until he sees it himself. And, and as many people who, who discuss on ways to defend the resurrection of Jesus, they do point out that this was a corporeal resurrection. It was not a, just a, a simply spiritual resurrection. And the facts clearly point to that. He's always asking for food. Mm. Yes. Apparently yes. it's hungry work. Mm -hmm. Plus, even for most people who are, you know, born and raised Catholic, relics aren't something you know a lot about usually. I mean, we, we all have the odd situation of the one family that apparently has all the relics in our area. All the relics. Mm -hmm. So, like, on Good Friday, our cross, we, we didn't use our normal cross because they're like, here, this cross has a piece of the, you know, true cross in it. So we're like, all right, thanks. <laughs> and when somebody brings true cross, you don't say no. Exactly. Or whenever we go on a retreat, it's like, oh, it's a women's retreat. Here's all the female saints. And, of course, St. Teresa uh, of Lisieux's dad because she, he's in the same reliquary as his mo her mom. <laughs> Well, you know, the two of them are inseparable. Yes. Mm -hmm. I do like the fact that on the guy's retreat, she gets to tag along for the same reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, anyways, I believe our, I believe the first question that most often comes up when talking about relics... Where's that in the Bible? Mm. Yeah, I really think we should have a, 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 a whole set of stupid questions just on where's that in the Bible. Because it seems that that one comes around with every set of stupid questions. Well, that's in part because many of our separated brothers and sisters accept only the Bible as a source of authority. Yeah. Except in all the instances where they really do rely on their own constantly changing tradition, but they still insist that you have to be able to that Catholics have to be able to point to all of our beliefs in the Bible, which fortunately we can. Yeah. But that's actually an episode for another time. Mm. So, we're going to focus on relics. Where do they show up? Aside from the thing I already mentioned, so there's where the do they shadow show up in the, in the yeah, Bible. Yeah, I was going to start out with the shadow is Acts chapter five, and that's um, twelve through sixteen. It's before they get flogged and are rejoicing that they were found worthy to no, suffer. Yep, yeah. yeah. and this is a, this is a shadow of a person. He he didn't lay hands on anybody. He didn't give them anything. He's, it was simply that they came into contact with his shadow. He's walking by, and that was efficacious. Mm -hmm. And then. 
later on in Acts, in 1911 through 12, we, we have one that's even more clearly connected to relics. Mm -hmm. um, and then God worked more than the usual miracles by the hand of Paul, so that even his handkerchiefs and aprons were carried from his body to the sick, and the disease left them, and the evil spirits went out. And then we have also in the Gospels themselves, we have in Matthew 9, 20 through 22. Mm -hmm. um, now a woman who for 12 years had been suffering from hemorrhage came up behind him and touched the tassel of his cloak. Just the tassel. Saying to herself, if I touch but his cloak, I shall be saved. But Jesus, turning and seeing her, said, take courage, daughter. Thy faith has saved thee. And the woman was restored to health from that moment. Didn't shake his hand. He didn't, you know rub mud into her eyes or anything like that. Just touch the tassel of his cloak. Yes, and I believe Mark has the same story in mm -hmm. which he is, you know, surprised. He felt the power <laughs> go out from he felt the power go out from him. And he looked around and goes, Who touched me? Hey boss, you're in a huge crowd. What do you mean you everybody me? everybody here's touching you? But only one in faith. But these are all except for of course the fact that everything connected to Jesus is a first crack class relic, second class relics. Which mm -hmm. you know it, it, it's much more, you know, easy to understand. Like, if there was some, some celebrity and they wouldn't, you know, throw their tissue at you, you'd mm -hmm. be like, I put it in a little box and I write whose it was. But the, the part that tends to weird out and it made, oh, Catholics, and, 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 and having it made me feel better. Yes. Actually, physically healed me. But even in the Old Testament, we have a case of what is called first-class relics, which are the body of someone. Hmm. That seems a little gross. Yeah, yeah. we'll get to that. We'll get to that one. Okay. Uh, and this is 2 Kings 13, 20 through 21. And I, I'm i going to go and, and, and put the name in modern English because yeah, yes. we are, of course, reading the old... This is an old translation. Because <laughs> it's in the public domain, baby. But we'll, we'll figure it out. And then Elisha died, and they buried him. And the rovers from Moab came to the land the same year. And some that were burying a man saw the rovers and cast the body in the sepulcher of Elisha. Of Elisha. Yes. Elisha. It's Elisha. Elisha. <laughs> and when they had touched the bones, dude. the man came to life and stood upon his feet. First of all, there's so many things to love about this story. First, they're just tossing one dude into another dude's grave. <laughs> And doing well, it they quickly were, because they could be attacked were, they were, any moment. Oh, jeez! There were rovers coming around. <laughs> Raiders! They, they, ah. they, they, had to get, they had to get rid of him while, you know... Too sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quick, get him in there. Let's seal this thing back up. I don't think they, I don't think they reburied him. They just tossed him <laughs> in and ran. <laughs> Which is good because it would stink to be resurrected only to be buried alive. That's mm -hmm. fair. Especially as then I can imagine like a... a comical movie thing where you eventually died of like starvation and you fell down on the bones again and came back to life in an unending circle. <laughs> maybe, maybe you make a little bit of progress each time so eventually you dig your way out. Alright, so published plot. We'll soon be launching our Kickstarter for our biblical horror movie. <laughs> I was trapped in Alicia's grave. <laughs> Trademark, copyright, all rights reserved. <laughs> But notice, the prophet doesn't do anything. He doesn't pray to God for the man. No, the, the prophet is he doesn't well, do good, and dead. Mm -hmm. He doesn't tell the guy to do anything, like bathe seven times in the river, mm -hmm. like Naaman the Syrian. The bones are just sitting there. Yep. The dead body falls on them. Holy smokes, the dead body is alive again, and the guy runs off. Yes, which is not to say that the bones are magic, and if you no. were buried alive with them, you wouldn't just keep coming alive every single time you touch them. Again, it's all about the power of God. Elisha has no power on his own. That's right. Again, Elisha's by this point dead. Yes. Yep. But yes. God, who is ever living, is still active through his servant. Yes, and, and Paul's, you know, hankies weren't especially, you know, powerful. It was simply the fact that this was a sign that, yes, I, I, I wish to go and, you know, heal you as much as God will allow. <laughs> and that the people wish to be healed. Yes. We think about all the times when the Lord tried to work miracles and, you know, the jerks in Nazareth were like, Pfft. You can't do anything. All right. Question number two. Stupid question number two. Stupid question number two. So come on now. Let's be honest. This is this is all new stuff. 
I mean, this was something that was done like the in like the medieval and the Renaissance to try and raise money for churches, right? I mean, it's not like relic. It's not like people were paying any attention to relics back in the day. This is all hoax stuff, right? When did I mean? When did this start? But it's in the Bible. Yes. Come on. When did it really start? All right. Even if we weren't going to take the the Bible stories, especially the ones in Act, which really seem to best relate to relics as a, you know a separate thing. If you go through church history, the first record we have of people collecting relics for sure and, you know, treating them as such mm -hmm. is the story of Polycarp's martyrdom, which mm. is from 156. And so of course, second century. Mm -hmm. And of course, Polycarp was himself a student of John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're talking very early on within a single generation of the apostles. And then we also have, um, farther along, mm -hmm. uh, the reason why we have all the, you know, various places in the Holy Land marked out in the possibly true cross, which, you know, may or may not have had a lot of fa fakes during the Middle Ages. I mean, I'm not saying that didn't happen, mm -hmm. was because of, after Christianity was made legal, Helena, the mother of the emperor, went down to the Holy Land to find all these things. Saint Helena. Yes. Well, she wasn't a saint back then. Mm. <laughs> or was she? She was Saint Lee. But again, you have to be dead to be a saint. That's like rule one. Paul's, Paul is clearly writing to the saints all the time. Yes, but he's you using... Only have to, you only have to be dead to be a canonized saint. He's using saint in the larger way of saying all Christians. Fair. Because we're supposed to be holy. Yes. So, Helena... One day to saint be, Helena. One day to be sainted... <laughs> Is going around the Holy Land, and she's finding all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's asking the local people. Where, where was so and so buried? Mm -hmm. Where, where did this, where did this event take place? She was going on like the first grand, the, the first grand pilgrimage kind mm -hmm. of a thing. Because, mm -hmm. of course, if you were an early Christian, you didn't have to go on pilgrimage. You already lived there. Yeah, exactly. Yes, and and one of the things she found was nearby where everyone said this was where the crucifixion took ha happened was a number of crosses so she's like I, I i honestly believe one of these is the true cross but which one mm -hmm. so she used the most you know, logical way to test it which was to touch a sick sick person to each one and see who got healed mm -hmm. <laughs> which isn't the best science, but, you know, at that day, that's a reasonable know. idea. I don't know. <laughs> Given what they had to work with as far as scientific method goes... That is completely... That's pretty the, solid. That is completely the scientific method. We don't know which piece of... We know that the, this piece of wood would cure a person. So we'll touch sick people until one of them is cured. <laughs> Ipso facto, that must be the true cross. It is really quite scientific. All right. I'll give you that. So, she takes cross number one. Touch a sick person. Nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Takes cross number two, touch a sick person, nothing happens. Takes cross number three, touch a sick person, sick person is cured. Loaded up on the truck, boys. Yep. Miraculous. It goes back to Rome. <laughs> <laughs> I believe to Constantinople. Mm. So we've seen relics in the Bible. Mm -hmm. We've seen relics we've in seen early church history. We've seen relics in early <laughs> church history. But there's got to be more stupid questions about this. Mm. Well, Mike already vaguely commented on one okay. in that... To our modern American ears, where death is something that happens at a other location, and then you know people that are professionals come and take the body and make it look as lifelike as possible, and then you know that's it. You don't have to touch things. You're not. There are no you know churches filled with skulls like there are in Europe mm. and stuff. It seems super gross that you know here's something that a dead person had. You know here's a dead person's finger. Here's their hair. But. As we discussed for our um, All Souls Day, Day of the Dead episode, mm -hmm. you know, that's a weird American cultural hang-up that largely comes from our Protestant heritage. That really, we should be comfortable with morality, with mortality, because every one of us is eventually going to die. Yes, and even then, it's not just the... The, the Protestant thing, mm -hmm. it's simply the modern thing. Because mm. up until about Civil War era, where there was all those deaths, everyone pretty much took care of their own dead bodies. Mm. You know, Grandma was sick, mm -hmm. we, we, we took care of her, she died in her sleep, we put her out in the front room, 
and in hung the parlor. around. Yes, the parlor. Made sure she was really dead by, you know, hanging out for a couple days, make sure she didn't come to, and then buried her, occasionally building the casket herself. It was only at the point in which the Civil War happened where people were, you know, stationed five states over, died. They, they got embalmed by a professional. They got shipped back home. Another professional had to deal with it because, well, it was early embalming. They were still a little gross. They wanted to make sure that, you know, the family didn't faint because he was covered with green goo or something. Clean him up a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. So you could have that, you know, that open casket. Everyone else. Well, and, you know, when, yeah. you've got, when you've got thousands of people <laughs> who are dying by the week... Well, death becomes a big business at that point. Mm -hmm. And then it, it still took a long time because then only, you know, soldiers were, you know, treated that way. But, you know, once they got in going, you know, we can get, you know, extra money by being like, we have preserved your body. It became a more of an industry over time. Why, 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 put, why put grandma up in your front room mm -hmm. when you could put her up in her parlor? Mm -hmm. Well, you can invite all your friends up. We'll make a nice little place. But play some play some nice music. But think of how d disconnected we've become. Because Grandma doesn't even die at home. She dies in hospice. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's taken immediately from hospice to the funeral home. They embalm her and put that weird, creepy smile on her face. Yes. Well, you don't want to know how they actually have to do things with the body in I, order to make it look that way? I think the point of this episode is that I kind of do. There's it's, staples it's, there's armatures and plastic and, and super gluing involved. Yeah, and there should be none of that. Some putty. Oh. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah, no. The, the. So, we do think of bodies, caskets of mortality as gross. And that's our problem. Mm -hmm. Because that's not what God ever wanted us to think. Well, there is the part that, you know, death for humans wasn't the original thing, so it's kind of unnatural and gross. Oh, it totally is. It, it should be horrifying. Yes. But we shouldn't be horrified... Of it now, because we know that is now currently our fallen order. And we know that every... So whenever we bury a Christian, mm -hmm. we know that that body will one day be resurrected. Perfected. Made into that sweet, sweet resurrection body. Yeah. And walk through walls. can walk through walls. <laughs> and disguise itself. Ooh, I'm going to walk through all the walls. I, I have the feeling that at the end just of time, running. we will all recognize each other automatically, so the whole disguise thing was just a special thing for, you know, Jesus did then, you know. True. I, I doubt we could show up at a party and be like, who is that? Because we'll know everyone in heaven. But we'll all but we'll be having such fun that we'll just play along. Maybe. And then have a good heavenly laugh about it. <laughs> <laughs> sweet, sweet resurrection body. So, relics. They're awesome. They are. They're fantastic. And they do... While they do not have any power of their own... Nope. They have proven to be vessels... For God to work through. Except for possibly, you know, St. Teresa's gauntlet. Because, you know, she just needs one more stone and... I don't know. Don't snap. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe... One stone to rule them maybe all. Maybe a little arm wrestle and kind of everything? I don't know. I mean, really, the part that's missing the stone is where the relic is. So I don't know if that actually counts as one. And, you know, it's just the fact that she was alive and didn't have it on her. It is more precious than any of the, any of the stones. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, have you any additional stupid questions about relics? Have you stupid questions about any other subject? Comment below. Subscribe to our channel, ring the church bell to be alerted when the next amazing plot is uploaded. <laughs> because this one is so good, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> and, until next time... Remember to live your faith. Love your faith. Share, Share that, that love. love. And that cable hanging loose there, that's fine. Cable hanging loose where? Oh yeah, that one's fine. <laughs>